Welcome to Snail Trail 4x4. Today we're going to be installing an ARB diff breather kit on a 5th gen 4Runner. If you're curious what happened to my face, I actually got bit by a dog. My full story is on Instagram at Snail Trail 4x4. Here's the differential breather kit from ARB we received. Inside you can find the tubing. Uh, it's heat and uh, cold resistant, but we're still going to do our best to keep it away from those uh, the exhaust as best as possible underneath the vehicle. Uh, here's the block that is the breather. This is the main connection part for the tubing. We're going to be rubbing, running some of the adapters into these, into here, one of them, and then we're probably going to seal off the other three. And then this part here screws on top, and it um, is the main filter and breather for this block. Also inside of here came a bunch of zip ties. Uh, thanks ARB for those. We're probably definitely going to be using those underneath. So the benefits of having a diff breather kit is that you're not going to get any water into your axle. The primary way that you get water into your axle is when you submerge it on a trail and your diff breather actually will shut and it'll close so no air will go in but there's going to be such a little vacuum going on there that you're going to pull water through your axle seals. So the diff breather kit allows us to run a, an open tube. We're going to run it into the engine bay. The air intake is here and we're probably going to mount it along the firewall higher than the air intake. So it'll be as high as possible so we can go through as deep as water as possible. Those tubes are going to be open continuously all the time thus allowing a free flow of air in and out of the axle so that nothing can get pulled through those axle seals. So what we're doing is we're going to be sending a, actually the tire extender down. I'm going to send it down to Brennan. Do you want it align it? Do you want it over here? Uh, nope. On the other side? Yep. Over here? Straight down. Straight down. Perfect. He's going to put some tape and the line on there and then I'm just gonna pull it up through the engine. We're on the passenger side right behind the air intake. Ready? Yep. And we're up. Doing a little cleaning. Trying to get as much of the dirt and grime around this thing off as possible. Brennan likes to drive through mud puddles fast speeds mm -hmm. and so it got it really dirty <sighs> that's pretty good so the first thing we actually did was we removed the spare tire this gives us a ton of room right back here in the rear axle and it is easy to find the rear diff it's the silver cap right here then the next step that we did is we ran the tubing all the way from the rear axle up to the front this um, gave us our route, and now we know about how much extra tubing we have. We actually have a ton of it back here, which is good because we're going to leave a lot of excess tubing in this area, like probably an extra loop, maybe a slight more, so that when the axle drops or we get full droop, that we're not fully extending this brake line and it won't pop out of the fitting. So now what we need to do is we are going to remove the, the breather here with a 14 millimeter wrench. So I put the little shark bite adapter on there with my fingers. When I released the old breather, it wasn't very tight in there at all, so I'm not going to put it overly tight. I'm just going to snug it up a little bit and that should be totally fine. And this is a different size. Uh, hold on. Bigger? It's smaller? smaller. Maybe a 13? 13. Right. Let's see if this will go over. <coughs> Alright, that's plenty tight. Next step is push the tube into the little shark bite. We had tape on this end when we were running it through so we didn't get any gunk down the tube. I just took the tape off and now I'm just going to push it down and in. 
you only get one shot at this so make sure it's nice and even and smooth because it bites in and then that's all you got there it is you can feel a little pop right when it goes down and in and you know you're in there so now we're gonna pull the excess back we're gonna leave a little loop we're gonna start zip tying our way towards the engine bay one of the tricks that I've learned is we're gonna leave a loose the very first zip tie that's gonna hold it up is gonna be nice and loose that way if it does need to move and flex it can just slip really easy on that zip tie So in the little baggie came three of these uh, plugs and four shark bites along with two self-tapping screws. Uh, we're using only one diff breather today, just the rear axle. And so we're going to put three of the plugs in and we'll add one more of these shark bites. These plugs are a three millimeter Allen head. We'll just hand tight them in first. And then I'll grab the Allen wrench and we'll just tighten it up. Doesn't need to go too tight. There's a little O-ring in there, so you just want to compress it a little bit. That's plenty. Now we'll put these on this side. That one there. Put this one here. Tighten those up. Right there, huh? That's it. So the I looked at the thickness of the drill bit compared to the thickness of the drill or the screw and see how that's just about the same size as the shaft of the screw but smaller than the threads. Mm -hmm. So that's about perfect. Looks right. Right? Yeah. So that's how you can measure. That's how I measure for. Snugness with that. Looks a little off, but I think it's fine. Routing the cord back along the firewall and then up, we're just going to measure it to length and then we snap it back into that shark fitting. And then we're pretty much done. We just have to put the cap on and then that's it. Thanks for watching this episode of Snail Trail 4x4 where we installed a rear diff breather kit on the 5th gen 4Runner. Big thanks to Trail 4R for supplying the rig so we can do this build. We're super excited with it. It came out really nice, super clean. Probably the hardest part was running the line from the rear axle up into the engine bay. The whole entire thing took about an hour. So if you just have some spare time, it's a really good, easy build to do. It's gonna help you prolong the rear axle so you don't get any water in there if you do any river crossings. So I say do this build. I'll put a link down in the description so you can grab this kit for yourself. So follow us along on our adventures, snailtrail4x4.com. Hammer down on that subscribe button, and thanks for watching. Snail Trail 4x4.